Thank you, Jasmine. Welcome to Jazz Vespers of St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Sit back, relax, and those of you at home, uh, get yourselves comfortable and enjoy this evening of jazz, scripture, and prayer. Bird sweet, leave you no doubt, tell you about Charles Yardbird Parker was his name. The facts, he carved his name in history. The sax was his axe. His improvisation was miraculous. The mastermind of rhythm was he. He blew with no and nobody had ever heard before till that blue has ever been. his life through. He gave it to the art bird sweet. I'm because he never stopped knowing. With yeah, his miserable woes, he seemed to calm his own. He'd make his person listen and feel. He'd never know not what being low down could be. He knew that blowing and that music on a seven He blew and blew and blew until he had the changes, had the sound, and that was all before he was just a boy in Kansas City. So pretty. After he came to New York town, all the road the jazz and listened with admiration. Some before his new sound around the nation, and Bob deserves the credit for the stimulating renaissance of jazz. It makes me very happy to announce a goodly portion of his best works recorded. So have a drink, hurry it up, and get yourself some yard bird sweet.
gave us a high five sweet. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God, for with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
I invite you to join me in the psalm for this evening. The psalm is uh, number 71, and I invite you to read the verses in bold. For those of you at home, you will see them on your screen. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In, in your, your righteousness, righteousness deliver, deliver me and set, set me free. Incline, incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver, deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I never cared much for moonlit skies. I never saw back at the fireflies. But now that the stars are in our eyes, I'm beginning to see the light. I never went in for afterglow. A candlelight on the desert floor. But now that the lights are turned down low, I'm beginning to see the light. Used to ramble through the park, shadow boxing in the dark. Then you came and caused a spark that for a fire now. Never made love by lantern shine. I never saw rainbows in my world. Now that your lips are burning mine, I'm beginning to see the light. cared much for moonlit skies. I never winked back for your eyes. But now that the stars are in your eyes, I'm beginning to see the light. I never went in for afterglow. I can't light on the vessel too. But now when you turn the lamp down, oh, I'm beginning to see the light. Ramble through the park, shadow boxing in the dark. Then you came and caused a spark as for a long fire. Now I never made love by lantern shine. I never saw rainbows in my wine. But now that your lips are burning.
Our gospel reading for this Sunday is from Luke's gospel. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The headline might read, Jesus heals on the Sabbath, and we might say, so? That's a good thing, right? The Sabbath day is the day of the Lord. What, when better to do something that is compassionate and good? But that response is not what we heard. What we heard from the synagogue leader was indignation. Jesus was in the process of teaching in the synagogue, and she had interrupted. And furthermore, what was she doing there? The synagogue was the place where men came. So Jesus should have ignored her. But no, he interrupted the whole proceeding, called her over, and then healed her. So then we might say, well, you know, okay, they were indignant because of the interruption, but still, she was healed. Should that not be a cause for celebration? But no, this leader of the synagogue had not expected Jesus to do that. There were six other days of the week when healing could take place. Why on the Sabbath, the day that the commandments say, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, Apparently, they didn't think healing a woman who had been crippled for 18 years as something holy. Jesus, of course, chastises the leader. If you lead your animals to water on the Sabbath, shouldn't a human being be healed? This is a mistaken notion about the Sabbath. What does it mean to rest on the Sabbath, for it to be holy? It means to remember God with thanksgiving and to be intentional in nurturing our spiritual lives. It does not mean giving us a pass on being compassionate to others. And that's a prime example of being too rigid, especially when it comes to the law. And, you know, we're experiencing some of that in society now. Laws, even the Constitution, are not ends in themselves, but a means for providing a society that is caring and safe and just for all of its citizenry. And Jesus summed up all of the religious law and said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus loved this woman and he healed her. Amen.
I invite you to join me in prayer. After each petition, I will say, Hear us, O God. I invite you to respond. Your mercy is great. Let us pray. Compassionate God, make us flexible in responding to the needs and concerns of this world in our attitudes and actions, such that love is our motivating force. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Giver of life, help us to see and give thanks for the beauty of the world around us, the gift of that which is, rather than that which isn't, the divine spark that transcends the challenges and limitations of this life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You promise rest when we are weary and relief from our burdens. Give us your peace, the peace which the world cannot give. Calm our anxious souls and lead us in living grateful lives. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. We marvel at the beauty of this earth, the delicacy of flowers, the expanse of the sea, the grandeur of the mountains. At the same time, we are learning that we cannot take for granted the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Lead us in wise stewardship of our earth and all that you have created. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. As we care for the earth, so lead us through the challenges of this day. Affordable housing, economic disparity, immigration, prison reform, to solutions that value the God-given dignity of all human beings. Hear us, O God, your Your mercy mercy is great. We celebrate the joys of music, art, dance, and all that lifts the soul. Continue to bless and inspire these jazz artists in the music they share with us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustain all who are grieving, lonely, anxious, struggling with addictions, ill, or in need. Give refuge to those who struggle to find or maintain adequate food and shelter. Guide our elected officials, church communities, and social agencies in making wise decisions that improve the lives of those most in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you've called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Provide us with that peace which the world cannot give and a song in our hearts that rings with joy and gratitude through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working through us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine.
tenor saxophone and band director and over in the corner Manny Diao uh, keeping all of you at home in the spirit of things here and of course Jasmine and Lily who help us with our candles thank you all for coming have a restful evening and do come back and bring your friends we're here every Thursday at six o'clock aloha <laughs>